Welcome back everyone to Punctuate Theatre and Dream Speakers Virtual Indigenous Artist Hub. I'm Rebecca Sadowski, Métis dance and theatre artist here in Edmonton. And today I have the honour of sitting down and chatting with Sheer Modesty, also known as Ayla Modest. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ayla. Thank you for having me. Ayla is a Nehio and Gwich'in dance artist who currently lives in Edmonton. She's also one of the creators of Isquiteo Isquewa, a burlesque performance group that explores sexual liberation in Indigenous culture. Ayla has performed with many local shows here in Edmonton, including Shumka's Ancestors and Elders, Mile Zero Dance, Asthma Theatre, Edmonton Fringe Festival, and Godessa. And in her dancing, she strives to decolonize sexuality and also expresses art through conversation, uh, ceremony, and performance. Genocide is not an essential service. Count the ways in which our land has served us. Legal law makes me really fucking nervous. You better believe that all of our youth are worth it. You better believe all of our youth have earned it. You better believe that the land is already perfect. Well, at first it was really challenging because I was looking into the future and just thinking of all the gigs that were going to get cancelled because my gigs were booked until about the end of April. And I was just like thinking, wow, that's like a lot of money, a lot of income, a lot of energy. And then on the flip side, it was a lot of energy that I could save for myself as well. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Can you tell us a bit more about where sheer modesty came from and, and what that identity means to you? Yeah, uh, sheer modesty is, um, I like to look at her and she's still evolving as it, um, it feels like sheer could be a part of my drag character as well because I started to do Be a Drag King last year. Right. And that um, evolved a little bit I decided to have a little rest with that till I figured out what was really important at that time for me to explore deeper and then sheer modesty came about after that and almost like in the opposite spectrum of Leo emotional but sheer modesty is actually like a, a combination of all my characters I feel like sheer represents the oppressed um, female archetype that um, has been silenced in her expression. Sheer represents this creature-esque, really weird, abstract, extraterrestrial being that is also a part of me. Sheer is um, a lot of, uh, I guess, curiosity, and that's the right. place I want to stay in, is like allowing other forms of expression and um, characters into Sheer. So Sheer is, um, like an absolute kind of like sharp end of something and it for me I'm I'm very adaptable I'm very flexible in that femininity and sheer is is kind of like a juxtaposition of that and modesty has its own story in itself because when I was younger people pronounced my last name as modest and that pissed me off because I didn't think that I was modest at the time although I was very quiet and shy I didn't feel like I was modest at all um, and so now that's coming out as kind of like a comedic relief on my me being able to like laugh yeah. at that and say I'm modest actually but I'm not at the same time so it's contradicting I consider myself as an Indigenous artist and Indigenous dancer. Everything that I do in the realm of art will be Indigenous because I identify with my Indigenous background. And I feel like even if I didn't identify fully with it, all my work would still be Indigenous based. And that is what a lot of us Indigenous artists are really trying to voice, is that we don't need to be completely cultural, completely traditional to be, to be um, strong in our lineage and have that creativity expressed through our lineage. But I'm still learning, I'm exploring 
so much and yeah. it's coming up in a lot of really dark and ugly ways right now um especially with covid hitting and the land defending acts being repressed because of that and that's yeah. something i've really put a lot of my energy and voice into and in small ways and bigger ways with deeper conversations that were more uncomfortable than others and those more uncomfortable conversations were absolutely necessary and will continue and that is a those conversations are actually a fuel for my performances that I create um, as well as all the other history and past that my direct family has faced through oppression through genocide through all sorts of assimilation and um, violence and abuse all of the work that I see on social media that you're doing in these efforts and these protests and you know you have such a, a strong grasp on reality in this country and about the oppression that um, indigenous bands and groups are facing and so I think it is very uh, you know brave and bold to bring these uh, ideas to the forefront and to include those in your in your artistic expression is um, you know is quite astounding Thank you for recognizing that and, and witnessing those come up on my um, social media because really that's kind of what I have right now to reach out to people and have these conversations. So um, I also want to keep learning about my culture and I don't really know how that's going to look because I, as much as I want to go to ceremony, I know that I need to wait for the right time. And this is something that elders taught me when I was younger and I went to ceremony is don't force going to ceremony just because your ego wants to learn. So I'm, I'm kind of keeping that there and I trust that um, there will be a time when I'm meant to be in the physical ceremony. I have been doing more of my spiritual practice on my own, which is helpful. I really want artists to know that our voice is really powerful. It's really important for us all to reflect on what that like end goal or look a little bit ahead. Like I kind of look at what the hereditary chiefs out on the coast are doing right now. And they look at the next seven generations. And that's a long time to look ahead for a lot of us because we're just focused on the next day or the next or the, the week if we're looking at our nine to five schedules or our work schedules even. But how can we make use of these precious moments when the earth is so vulnerable and our youth are so vulnerable and our elders, but especially our youth, because that is the future coming up. And how can we involve our art more with the youth and actually make that a part of our purpose as well? Um, it's interesting when I like when I look at hip hop culture and how inspired I am by it and how big, how a part of my life it has been um, for the, my whole life, pretty much just from being born in the nineties and having a big hip hop influence in the nineties and now being very close friends with female rappers in my life. I'm like, well, obviously this is meant for me and I need to absorb this and take the help and um, the inspiration as it's here. So I've just been like writing a lot of poetry and coming up with words that um, feel, um, well, just coming up with words. Uh, before COVID hit, I was going to freestyle nights. So I would go to um, freestyle rap nights. One of my friends, Thug Shells, her name is Michelle. She put on these amazing freestyle nights where there'll be new artists there every week. and. Um, very vulnerable times and like very like courageous people out there and I just thought wow this is actually possible um, I really wanted to try it so I've been doing it more here in my yeah. house just sharing with my sisters and my mom and getting I have one piece out that I put out so I'm gonna keep working on that Ayla, thank you so much for joining us today for the Indigenous Artist Hub interview. Thanks for having me on your interview and catching up with you a little bit. Bye. And thank you to the viewers who have tuned in for today's Indigenous Artist Hub video. Dream Speakers and Punctuate would like to thank the funders. Without the support, this project would not be possible. 
make sure to check out all of the other Indigenous artists that we are highlighting in this series. And I hope everyone is staying safe. Take care.